Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel where I'm doing another palette resurrection today. This is part of my palette resurrection series where I dig up an old palette and bring it back to life. Now, this palette I wouldn't consider dead because it's not being used or because people don't like it anymore or because people aren't talking about it anymore because they most definitely are. As we all well know, it is still alive and well on social media. But the reason I'm considering this a dead palette is because there have been so many palettes come behind it and just sort of take its place. The Wet n Wild dupe for this, which I am going to be showing you guys on my channel unless I already have at this point. This is a pre-recorded video. Anyway, the reason I'm considering this a dead palette is because there have just been so many similar ones come out right behind it on its coattails and this one is just sometimes forgotten about. I mean, not necessarily by everyone, but it, like I said, there have just been so many palettes come out on its coattails that, you know, there might just not be as much room for this palette in everyone's collection as there used to be because it has been buried. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. All right, I'm gonna start by priming my eyes with the anti-aging Urban Decay Primer Potion. Then I'm gonna set that base with tempera from the Anastasia Beverly Hills palette with my Morphe M576 brush. Then I'm taking raw sienna directly in my crease using the same brush and just building it up in very light layers. This palette in particular has a whole lot of pigment in their eyeshadows, which is a good thing, but it also makes them a bit hard to blend. So I really have to work in really, really light layers. <laughs> Then I'm just sweeping it up onto my brow bone a little bit using, you know, inward swiping motions, if that makes sense, just to get it to be placed where I want it to and blend it out as well as I would like. Then I'm going to go into Realgar using a Wet n Wild tapered blending brush from their Pro collection. And I'm kind of packing that on the outer part of my lid and then blending it up into my crease. I'm just barely towards the end. If you can see the motions I'm doing, I'm doing swiping motions, but mainly just bringing them inward as opposed to back and forth, just because I wanna keep that shape consistent. Just very short, quick blending motions. And of course, just making sure that same shade is pretty diffused in the middle of my eyelid. Then I'm taking Venetian Red on a Morphe M506 brush. I think this is probably my favorite shade in the entire palette. This one is actually fairly easy to blend out compared to the rest. And I'm putting that pretty close to my lash line and then blending it up toward my crease, but keeping this one on my lid. I'm not taking it into my crease or past my crease like I did the other two shades. Go back in with that Morphe M576, the larger blending brush, and just make sure everything is as blended as I would like on the edges of the look so far. Then I'm gonna go back in and pack a little bit more Venetian Red on and blend that out. It's really important to look at your eyeshadow looks from different angles and then go back and forth and make sure they match just so you can, you know, just so you can tell if you have the placement where you want it. And there's a lot of back and forth in most of my eye looks. Now I'm taking Cypress Umber on an e.l.f. smudge brush and keeping that really close to my lash line. This is one of those shades that's kind of difficult to blend out. I'm just going to leave that right on my lash line. Then I'm going to take Primavera on a Real Technique shading brush and putting that on the inner part of my lid where that blank space is. I'm 
just gonna intensify that a bit with my finger. Honestly, you can skip the shimmer altogether if you want to, but I love the shimmers in this palette. <laughs> then I'm gonna take that Wet n Wild brush and just make sure I've got my shape right. Just make sure they match up and blend out the edges once more. Go back in with that little brush and make sure those colors meet. For foundation, I'm using the IT Cosmetics CC Cream in the shade Fair. Blending that out with a Real Techniques Sculpting Brush. I like how this brush gets in really all the creases of my face. <laughs> I have a hard time finding any tools that will do that. I can get in between my eyebrows, around my eyebrows. This brush is great. Then I'm taking a beauty blender and smoothing over that application. For concealer, I'm gonna take the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Aqua Sealer in the shade Fair, and I'm using one of those generic brushes from the Vampire Brush Collection <laughs> and painting that where I need the coverage. I don't wanna put too much of it on top of my foundation if I don't have to, just because it will get cakey. Going around my nose with it, making sure I get pretty well covered under my eyes there and any parts of my face that I feel could stand to be a little bit brighter. To set that, I'm using the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder and Diffuse Light on a damp beauty blender. That just helps brighten. It also prevents my mascara from transferring when I do easy bakes, as I like to call them, under my eyes. I'm gonna set the rest of my face with that same powder on an e.l.f. highlighting brush. I'm just taking the Eco Tools full powder brush and ma making sure to get any excess powder. For bronzer, I'm using the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer on that It Cosmetics Velvet Luxe Plush Blush Brush, which I absolutely hate the name of. Adding a little bit more concealer on the texture of my skin. The texture on my face kind of makes my foundation want to fall apart when I start blending powder on top of it. So just concealing that a little bit. Then I'm taking the Tarte Amazonian Glade 12 Hour Blush in the shade Party. Same brush, blending that on my cheekbones. Also up around my eyes a bit, just to frame my eyes. For highlight, I'm going to use the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in the shade Moonstone on a Real Technique setting brush. Pretty glowy look. gonna add some bronzer to my jawline a bit. Gonna balance everything out. Then I'm taking the ColourPop Cream Gel Eyeliner in the shade Mr. Bing and I'm gonna line my bottom lash line with that. I'm starting with the actual lash line itself. I do end up lining the waterline with it as well. I'm gonna take my e.l.f. smudge brush and smudge out that eyeliner. Then I'm blending the shade Raw Sienna on an M5076 brush on my lower lash line over top of that eyeliner. Making sure I've got the shape right here. Yeah. 
To highlight my inner corner, I'm gonna take the shade Primavera again on that Wet n Wild pencil brush. Taking NYX Micro Brow into my brows, gonna brush them up first, try to shape them a bit, and then start to fill them in. I like to start with the outer corner of my brow and then go back and forth between both of them so that I can make sure that I've got the angles matched up before I fill in my entire brow. And then I just work my way inward, but I go back and forth between my brows. I've learned that going one brow at a time with me is just not doable. It makes my brows look a lot more even if I go back and forth the entire time I'm doing them. I'm gonna clean up that outer edge there with what's left on my concealer brush. Then I'm taking the Essence Make Me Brow in the shade Brownie Brows, and I'm combing through my brows with that. For mascara, I'm using the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. And this is the part where I put lipstick on out of frame, as usual. And that's the finished look, guys. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments. If you're not a subscriber and you wanna be, just hit the subscribe button on your way out, and I'll see you next time. Peace out, guys.